on LBC. 20 past four. Um, it seems like Groundhog Day, doesn't it, a little bit, that we're talking about this again. Uh, I wouldn't be talking about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party if it wasn't a major political news story today. So, as I say, all of you who think that there's an agenda here, there isn't. We're actually reporting the news. Um, Peter Wilsman, this Labour NEC member, uh, he has issued an apology. He says, not all of what I said has been accurately, accurately reported, but I accept that what I did say and the way I said it fell short of the requirement which I accept for discussions of contentious issues to be conducted in a fully civil and respectful way. I deeply apologise for any offence caused to those present and those to whom my remarks were reported. Uh, we'll come to your calls in a moment, but let's first of all talk to Naomi Wimborne Idrissi, a co-founder of the Jewish Voice for Labour. Naomi, good to talk to you again. Yes, hello, Ian. Um, it is Groundhog Day, isn't it? Um, oh, what, God, yes. what, what would I you say... Point, you know, what would you reporting what's out there. Well, I'm glad you accept that, because there are so many people on social media who don't um what what i don't know if you know peter wilsman i do i do he texted me last night and explained he was horrified at the way he'd been attacked and that he had given his deepest apologies because he he recognizes he was intemperate in the way he expressed himself but if you actually look at what he said i would contest that there was anything anti-semitic about it if that's what being what's being alleged well he talked about jewish trump supporters didn't he um well do you think there aren't any no, I, I don't think there aren't well, any. There you but, are. I mean, if so he, what, if he had, it, well, if he had made remarks saying black Trump supporters, I wonder whether you'd well, be I quite think, so forgiving. Uh, well, if there are black Trump supporters who were using, who because of their political allegiance were causing mayhem in a, uh, a political party, then I, I would be very uh, happy to use that terminology. I mean, the point is the politics that, that count here. This is not a question of people who genuinely care about fighting anti-Semitism or indeed any other form of racism. It's about people who are setting out to disrupt um, a, a, a fine institution in British life, the Labour Party, which has been in existence for over 100 years. And this, the reason it's Groundhog Day, because the attacks will not go away. The attacks are coming and coming and coming, regardless of the level of evidence. The evidence base is it's all about social media. It's all about some foolish person uh, here and there blurting out something really despicable. Well, it's a bit more than it's here, like, than here and there, isn't it? Because the, no, the Labour Party... Well, it the Labour Party have got 250 cases before it at well, the moment. Out of 600,000 members. When you've had... A, well, I think there, there have been over 1,000 altogether. Oh, no, but those are allegations, Ian. This is... We, we've what, got people out there... Why is it, though? ...their lives to trawling and why trawling. Why is it that it takes Labour so long to consider these cases it, when they, okay. they launch a disciplinary... Okay, let me, hang on, let me finish the question first. No, no, but I know what it uh, no, is. You, you don't know what it is. No, you don't <laughs> okay, know what it is. Just... Uh, <laughs> your way. Um, I, I will put it my way. Thank you. Um, <laughs> why, do the, why do they take so long with all of these cases, and yet within hours, Margaret Hodge and Ian Austin, two respected Labour MPs, are issued with disciplinary no, hearings me. purely because they Margaret question Hodge the Labour Party's position. Were sent letters saying, we've noticed some, somebody's made an allegation against you, it's going to be investigated. My friend Moshe Makhava, an Israeli professor of the philosophy of mathematics, with a long history of studying all these issues, was expelled instantly because of a document that he'd written that was handed out in the form of a newsletter at Labour Party conference. This man is a, a sort of, light, he's in his 80s, a lifelong anti-racist and socialist campaigner. He was expelled because somebody alleged that something in what he'd written might be in contravention of Labour Party rules. What's, what's slow about that? The secretary of my organisation, Glyn Secker, another Jewish activist of long standing, was summarily suspended because of allegations that he was associated with a Facebook group which had some occasional anti-Semitic posts on it. Both of those people were reinstated after a quite justified outcry. But I, I, there was nothing slow about it. Last there were hundreds time, of such cases. Last, there have been, in fact, several hundred, maybe thousands of lowly members of the Labour Party who've been suspended instantly without any chance to hear any evidence against them or know who's made the charge against them on the pretext of something they said about Israel that... Well, what, 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 about, what about his attack on the 70 rabbis? He didn't attack them. Well, he did. He them well, L L Louise Ullman certainly people. thinks he attacked Look, them. These people are talking about an existential threat to Jews in this country. I think Pete has the absolute right to say, excuse me, in my party, 
where is the evidence of an existential threat? Well, let me that tell you. Let me let me tell you where. Out. Let me tell you where that that comes from because um, there are many many Jewish people in this country now who say that if Jeremy Corbyn is elected prime minister, they would seriously consider leaving the country because so, they so wouldn't feel told safe. That they're in danger. Honestly, the history. Well, they have brains. That they 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 have brains, and they can work out for themselves if a political party is a danger to them or not. And they've come to the conclusion that it is. Look, all these people in the Board of Deputies, the Jewish Leadership Council, stand with us. We believe in Israel, Labour Against Anti-Semitism, Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. All these groups, BICOM, they all have a political view. Most of them are not in the Labour Party. I have, I have yet, after two years of trying, I have yet to meet any individual Jewish member of the Labour Party who has encountered in the party from members with whom they have to work. All right. Real well, let me let me let me give you a, let, me, remark, let me give you a yes, few examples. Stuff, yes. let, let me give you a few examples. A Labour mm-hmm. councillor who voted against permission for a new Marks and Spencer store because he felt that M&S are quotes Zionists who kill Palestinians. That kill Palestinians. There's one for you. Lord yeah, Ahmed that's blamed that's a Jewish conspiracy for his imprisonment for a fatal motorway crash. You, you I mean, I, I could go on and on and on, and yet what? you don't seem to think these things happen. No, I know some, uh, you say you could go on and on and on. How many of the things that you're going to go on and on and on about are proven to be from actual Labour Party members? Because we know, you know what the internet is like. Well, they're, they're, you know what the, social media is like. They're, they're councillors, they're, they're elected politicians, okay, they're not councillor. lowly people. Yeah, no, that, well, that's, re- that's anti-Semitic, that's reprehensible. But does that mean that Jews up and down the country are terrified to step inside a Labour Party branch meeting? I think it, it does, does, actually. I, th- I absolutely think it does in some cases, yes. Well, I don't no, think you understand I mean, mine, how people are feeling. The hundreds of people in Jewish Voice for Labour who are Jews... What, what do you say to what do you say to Owen Jones, Billy Bragg, Matt Zarb cousin, Aaron Bastani, and plenty of others who yeah. want Pete Wilsman to now stand down from the NEC elections? Well, I think they're backing down. In, I know why people take that view because they're desperate for this awful onslaught against the most anti-racist, humane leader of the Labour Party we've probably ever had, or prospective prime minister we've probably ever had. They want it to stop. Of course they do. Owen Jones and Aaron Bastani and the others you mentioned. They're under the illusion that if they back down and throw another victim to the wolves that the, the attacks will stop well the, these are people on the on the left they are corbyn supporters yes, um, i know they are they want it to stop they want it to stop they well, want it could to... stop couldn't it if jeremy corbyn actually did something about it <laughs> Look, he had the Chakrabarti report. Uh, two years on, he, he, how many of the recommendations of that report have actually well, been implemented? Do you think that is, Ian? Well, you tell me. Recently replaced you tell the me. General, sorry, you're talking over me. We've only recently replaced the General Secretary. The previous General Secretary had no intention... No, of that's just not true. That. That's just not true. You're well, smearing you a good know? man. You are smearing... Because I, I know what happened there, believe it or not, because I do have Labour Party friends, and I, I, I know exactly well, what happened there, and he true? has been smeared. You to me what he has been been smeared by people like you who say that he didn't do anything and they're just waiting for uh, Jenny Formby to take over. It, it's utterly ridiculous. And what you're no, doing no, is un- no, you are undermining... How you do are- you know that? Well, because I know enough like, people... Know I know enough Under people... Rule, hundreds of people who've done nothing anti-Semitic have been suspended, and many of them remain so, and the backlog is so huge that, in my view... All those cases that were brought under that old regime should be put on put on ice because oh really they should, they should escape scot free they shouldn't get they shouldn't have not their not. cases looked into because it's taken too long. Look, I know some. I know a young Asian um, council candidate in East London. Actually, in his case, he was anti-Semitism wasn't even part of it. He was a Corbyn supporter. And a whole case was built up against him based on fabrications and lies, specifically so that he could not stand as a council candidate. He threw the local Labour Party into disarray. It's created very bad blood and blood. And there are hundreds of cases like this young man's. Lots of them are to do with anti-Semitism. Some are not. There was a regime of intimidation and harassment. And I'm sorry, if you think it wasn't the case, you need to talk to some of the people who've received those letters, who've been suspended, right, just, who've been told they're in finally. breach of some code. And it's all about this IHRA thing, which people... Are well, indeed it is, is. And, and the Labour Party seems incapable of accepting the wording that virtually everybody else in the country well, well, has accepted. You, look, until last week, who'd read the damn thing? Does it? You know, who'd read it? What it says... Oh, OK, and here's a really important thing. The person who wrote that as an academic in the States called Kenneth Stern, a Zionist, 
He Ooh, produced what, what a crime that is to be a Zionist. Excuse me, are you going to listen to what I'm saying about him? I am listening to what you're saying, this and I'm picking you up on it, too. He was a, he was a learned it's man, my job. and he, he produced his definition, which became at one time the European Monitoring Committee on Xenophobia and Racism working definition. He produced it because he thought it might aid data collection, that people would be able to compare... You know, they were, they were logging anti-Semitism in the same way in different countries. Now that he's seen it being used in the States, in Britain, he mentioned specifically Bristol and Manchester universities where events have been banned, speakers have been ordered to provide copies of their speeches before being allowed to talk to students, including a Holocaust survivor in one case. He is saying that this has become an exercise in chilling and McCarthy-like operations. He is saying... Do not use this thing that I drafted, that he drafted, but does it himself. Do not use it in the way that... What, what, you're, doing, what you're doing is undermining every Jewish person in the country by saying this. You don't actually even recognise that the problem exists. And uh, no wonder you're a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, because he clearly agrees with you. 0345 973 Naomi, thank you very much. That's Naomi Wimborne Idrissi, co-founder of Jewish Voice for Labour. It's 4.31 here on LBC. Let's get the latest news headlines from Thomas Watts.